Thursday, Henry stuck with Monroe. Well, it won't be long now. And that's too close for comfort. <laughs> then Mama gets a marriage proposal. I can be the something old at my own wedding. And he's changing the family's lifestyle. Eat red meat, your heart won't be. It takes two. Then, automatic weapons in the hands of civilians. How did they get them? What are they doing with them? And Dustin Hoffman finally speaks out on 2020. You should tell the truth of your mind. Join us tonight on ABC. Ryan's hope. Did you actually leave the force last night? Yes. Let me help. You can't. The best thing for you to do is to leave me alone. Please go. I'm not giving up on this. And on the edge of night. No, I won't let you. I, no! There's a doctor around here. Well, the doctor's using the wrong prescription. I'm not going to let you get any worse. Mrs. Cavanaugh, I'd like another drink. But the bar is closed. Ryan's hope. The edge of night. Weekdays. The People's Court today at 4.30. It's absolutely intolerable. A grown man behaving like a complete foodlum. Yeah, don't forget the grown woman who started it, Mrs. Everett Cooper. I don't know. I think you should call the police. I mean, he should be arrested. He probably feels the same way about me. And, and this is really true. I mean, this guy has some big shot on the medical board. That ah, seems to be the case. Adds a little spice to the situation, doesn't it? He's the new county supervisor, at least that's what Geraldine well, that's remembers. Well, not exactly it. He's the new head of the Medical Review Board, which is a civilian appointment, but it's still very powerful. And that only makes what he did worse, and a man like that should know how to behave himself. Because you didn't know who he was, did you? No, I didn't have any idea. I hadn't read about the appointment. I'm not that interested in the politics of medicine. She, his wife, did mention something about her husband being in medicine, but I didn't pay any attention. That's because you were too busy defending your honor. I don't care how important he is. Mom, he not only attacked you in your own office, he slandered you. No, 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 the slander came from his wife. She's the one who accused me of uh, sexual misconduct. He was just doing what he thought was his duty, especially since it's now his obligation to oversee the behavior of all the doctors in town. Yes, well, he's now in a position to cause all kinds of cause trouble, isn't trouble. he? He's already caused the trouble. Mom, I don't know why you're not... I don't know why you're not going to the newspapers. Even you, you could do a story on WMON. Oh, Jody, I'm sorry. That's not a very good idea. No, I don't think it is either. Hello. Yes, it is. Hello, Dr. Miller. Yes. Yes, I remember last year at the, at the uh, convention, we had that long talk about the outpatient clinic. No, I didn't know you were. I understand you guys have a, a new supervisor. I'm not surprised at all. Well, what is it? Well, now, I assume that you are going to wait and hear both sides of the story. Well, no, I, I didn't expect anything else from a group of your stature. Of course, when? No, no, I can't. I can't make it. Then I got a hospital rant. Now, look, what would you say if I said the interests of my patients came from... Yeah, all right, I understand. Yeah. 11.30. Mm-hmm, okay. Goodbye. Well, that's about what happened, isn't it? Mr. Cooper didn't waste any time. I am to appear in front of the review board tomorrow morning. Edge of Night is brought to you by Gleam, the toothpaste made for adults. It fights cavities and adult bad breath. And by Ivory, for a pure, natural kind of clean. Lather up with Ivory. After a tough practice, you probably think I use a deodorant soap. No way. I made a break from deodorant soaps a long time ago. A clean break with Ivory. Wow. Look inside. Ivory is a basic, natural soap to give you an honest clean. And there's no way you can be cleaner than that. You see, Ivory doesn't mix up clean with a bunch of additives like heavy perfumes and deodorants. Those things don't get you clean. And I always use a deodorant after I shower 
So I don't want one in my soap. Ivory's made to do just one thing, get me as clean as I can be. So I feel clean, I smell clean. That's an honest clean. Make a clean break. With Ivory, no soap can get you cleaner than that, no matter how hard you try. They are salt. These are the enemies of the adult mouth. <laughs> And here is what they leave behind. The food, the film, the bacteria that can cause adult bad breath and cavities. And this is the adult strength toothpaste tough enough to clean up the adult mouth. Gleam. Gleam works three ways. First, Gleam helps strip away food and film with an exclusive cleaning formula. Then Gleam fights mouth odors with seven breath protectors. And Gleam helps protect against cavities with proven fluoride protection. So eat and drink like an adult but protect your mouth with Gleam, the adult strength defense that fights the enemies of your mouth. Nora, I've been thinking, and the more I do, I wonder, what did he do that was so wrong? I mean, he didn't do anything, really. You've got a really short memory, Barbara. Don't you remember the way he treated you, how upset you were? When he fired you for no reason at all? I can hardly remember anything else. I dream about that night all the time. Well, what more proof do you need? I'm just not sure that he was to blame. I mean, maybe he was right. Maybe I just assumed too much. <laughs> I can see you don't know men at all. You really are a little Miss Innocent. But what bothers me the most is, well, what you did. I mean, pretending that he attacked you. He did attack me. You were my witness. Remember? I'd be very careful about changing my story now, Barbara, if I were you. You've heard of perjury. Well, people go to jail for perjury. But that only happens in court, doesn't it? I mean, you didn't make any criminal charges against Miles. And there's something else to consider, honey. You're a nurse. I mean, you're licensed just as a doctor, right? Yes, of course. Well, nurses can lose their licenses just like doctors. If it came out that you lied about something this big, well... There goes Barbara Montgomery, RN. Do I make myself clear? Yes, you do. I always do what I think is absolutely necessary. You'd better believe that. Hey! That's a personal call. I have to go remember what I said. If you've got cold feet, put on a pair of wool socks. That was a personal call, wasn't it? Uh, a friend of mine wanted some medical advice. Yeah, well, you better tell your friends not to call you here anymore. Mr. Whitney doesn't like it, and here's something that I don't like. Nobody made my bed today. It's not my fault. I'm the housekeeper, not the maid. Well, you're the person who's supposed to see that things get done around here, right? Well, it couldn't be helped. The maid has the flu or something, and I'm not going to do it. Do it yourself. Hey, listen, you better come off your high horse, baby, because if you don't, you just might get knocked off. Stop mulling me! Well, you are sure lording it over everybody these days, aren't you, Nora? You think you've got this whole damned household under your thumb. <laughs> this little thumb? What do you mean by that? <laughs> you just better take my advice, baby. You can push some people only so far, and then they push back a lot harder than you ever could. Don't send away. Hey. I'll make the bed. Matter of fact, I'll make it up for both of us for tonight. Don't do me any favors. Hey, it's been a long time since we've been together. I mean, we have to talk. About what? You know, about what? Our wedding plans. We didn't make any plans. That's the point. We have to make them, and soon. I don't want to be walking down that aisle four months pregnant. <laughs> Pardon moi. Hello, Gunther. We're here to see Mr. Whitney. He's expecting us. Uh, yes, sir, Mr. Carr. Uh, he's waiting in the study. Uh, right this way, please. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Whitney? Uh, Mr. Carr's here. Good evening, Sky. I thought you'd never get here. Well, what have you got for him? Good news. For now. Thank God. He's had a long talk with Washington. My boss uh, recognizes the risks he's taking, that we're all taking, but he's willing to rely on my personal judgment. Which means? To start with, it means that the arrest warrant issued by the Monticello police will not be exercised for the time being. So there aren't going to be any public charges? Huh? No charges of any kind, until Mr. Cameron and the CEA say differently. Well, my life is in your hands. Huh? Oh, no, Mr. Whitney, it's in your hands. Yours and Miss Raven Alexander's. What she's able to accomplish is going to determine your future. Not much of a basis for a future, is it? Sky, 
What we're attempting to do is obviously as delicate as it is difficult. We're dealing with the emotions of three human beings. But the one person we're most concerned about is Ian Devereaux. That's right. My feelings don't matter worth a damn, do they? It's obvious that Devereaux knows about your relationship with Raven. He may even know that uh, she set her cap for you long before he arrived in Monticello. There is one thing he may not know. What's that? Just how you feel about Raven. The old adage still applies. It takes two to tango. So you've got to convince your friend Ian that what he might now suspect is not true. You've got to convince him that you are no longer interested in Raven, that your romantic interests lie in a completely different direction. I'm in love with Raven. We were going to be married. Are you suggesting that you want me to start seeing another woman? Do you think I'm pretty? Yep. Wish I did. Trust me. I don't know why I'm going to this dumb party. Why? Could Michelle be there? And she's beautiful. Well, let's take a look. There, all gift wrapped. I am pretty, aren't I? Honey, you're a knockout. If you don't have a sun camera, there's something left out of your life. Purina has just invented a product so new, so effective, we're keeping the name top secret. It's a cat litter deodorizer concentrated to work like nothing ever has. At every litter change, just add one pouch full. These concentrated deodorant pellets stop odors before they start. Sound effective? It is. So new and effective, we're keeping the name. Top secret. New top secret cat litter deodorizer. Keeps litter odors top secret. Camilla, you can come in. Oh, for heaven's sake, you charming, Ian. A little world of your own. Now, what's it come to life? Oh. So, at last, your dream has come true. One of them, anyway. Is that all you want out of life, Ian? A toy train and a toy wife? Clever, darling. Inaccurate, but clever. What is so inaccurate about it? For one thing, I want much more than that. I want to enjoy life's pleasures to the full before I'm old and grey. But you don't want to enjoy these pleasures all alone. No, but there are certain things you can enjoy alone. Mm. <laughs> is this one of them? Not really. Didn't you see how anxious I was to show you my accomplishment? And how much more eager you're going to be to show Raven Alexander. I wonder if she'll like it. Well, she'll adore it, if she has any sense. Speaking of Raven, what happened when she was here last night? Oh, so you knew she was here. I thought you'd retired. Oh, that laugh of hers woke me. What made her so happy? Actually, she wasn't that happy. Even her laughter was a bit strained. As if she had something on her mind. Well. Last stop. Ian, when are you seeing Raven again? Tonight, as a matter of fact. For dinner. I think I'd better come along to protect you. How about a foursome? Well, suit yourself. You usually do. <laughs> How are you, Spencer? I haven't heard from you in some time. Hello, Camilla. I didn't know you wanted to hear from me. Well, now, why wouldn't I? Not only are you my oldest friend in Monticello, you're my only friend. Yes, I'm sure that's my only distinction in your life, Camilla. Why, Spencer, now, what a thing to say. You know, you always have a distinction in my life. Shall I prove it to you? How? Come to dinner with me tonight. 
With my brother and his new heartthrob. I assume you mean Raven. I know that'll be a hardship for you. But I promise to make such scintillating conversation, you won't even know she's there. Camilla, do you need a fourth? Is that the reason for this invitation? Spencer, don't be mean. I could always get a fourth. But I want to see you again. I've been thinking about you a lot lately. I'm sorry, Camilla. I can't make it. Oh, you've got other plans. I'll think of something. Spencer, please. Now, I hate the way things ended between us when we last met. I think there must be some way we can be friends again. I don't think it's a good idea, Camilla, and I'm sure Raven would agree with me. Oh, Spencer! Maybe some other time, Camilla. Good night. Good night. That sure, secure, confident feeling. Because each sure gives you enough protection to help feel dry all day. Confident, confident, dry and secure. Raise your hand, raise your hand. If you're sure. Oh. 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 Hey, come on, honey, you gotta play space this. Well, come on. Just for a second, let me turn this chicken off. That's the other chicken. That's the chicken. We left it soaking. Mom got spaced out, huh, Dad? Won't the chicken taste greasy? Not with Crisco oil. Grease! Not greasy. Told you. Space cadet. <laughs> Crisco oil. For fried foods that taste great, not greasy. Inside every Duncan Hines brownie, there's a deep, dark difference. It's mighty chocolatey. Mm. Uh, how does it taste? Deep, dark, and delicious. You don't say! The deep, dark difference in a Duncan Hines brownie is its chocolatey moistness. Compared to another leading mix, ours are chocolatier and moister. Want to try one? Yes. Mmm. Deep, dark, and delicious. <laughs> Duncan Hines brownies. Deep, dark, and delicious. Are you doing any portraits now? Well, a few. Mostly thanks to you. People come through the paper. Executives who've been promoted and girls who've gotten themselves engaged. I've had a lot of those recently. Positively exhausting looking at all that radiant happiness. Well, you're not exactly radiantly happy these days, are you? No, I guess I'm not. Is it because of Jim? Well, I got a letter from him. Would you like to hear it? Only if you want to read it. I didn't want to read it, but since I already have... Is it definite? Is he going to take that job with the repertory company? Nancy, I thought you realized that was a foregone conclusion. The only thing that could have prevented him from taking it is if they hadn't liked him, but of course they liked him very much. Wait, right here. I didn't know how I was going to feel when I walked into my first empty New York theater. My heart started doing triple somersaults. The only time that happened to me before was when I first took you in my arms. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to read that part. Anyway, to sum it up, uh, he got the job. Well, I guess, uh, now one is supposed to say, I'm glad for him. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's what one is supposed to say. Just the way one was supposed to say, take the job if it's offered, and don't worry about hurting one's feelings. Mm -hmm. Well, I know you told him that. You didn't have any other choice. I didn't, Nancy. I had to say all those wonderful, understanding things to Jim, even though there was maybe a part of me saying, oh, please don't go, I'm gonna miss you. Or maybe it was because it was only a part of you that was saying that, hmm? I know what you're gonna say. You're gonna say that I didn't give Jim any real choice because I didn't encourage him to stay. Did you? Well, no. Oh, I guess you're right, Nancy. I never let Jim know if he were special to me. But I guess I don't have to worry about that anymore, do I? All I can say is I will do my best. I will try to encourage Raven, to encourage Ian, although, of course, I have no idea how. I There's only one way to encourage Ian Devereaux, Mr. Whitney, for you to demonstrate clearly that you are not uh, enamored of Raven Alexander. Now, how you do that is up to you. Oh, is it that late already? Problem, David? 
Oh, no, I just promised the boss I would call him right about now. You can call from here if you like. Oh, do you have a phone I can use privately? There's one in the hallway. All right, I think I'll do that. My boss is a very punctual sort of person. Why don't you go on ahead, Mike? I'm sure Nancy's anxious to see you. No problem. Uh, she's visiting a friend, but I will say good night. I imagine we'll be in touch. Oh, yes. In one way or another. Good night, Scott. Well, what do you think? Well, it's not going to be easy. But there's enough at stake to motivate everyone to do his or her best. I hope you're right. Good night. Good night, dear. Excuse me, I was told that there was a phone I could use. Uh, you mean that? No, no, uh, something more private. Oh, well, there's one in the hall upstairs. Oh, thank you. What are you up to now, Nora? What? I asked what you're doing standing around. I have a bed to make. Then go make it. All right, I will. You're having an awful lot of meetings these days? None of your concerns, Spencer. It's not business. Well, this is. It has to do with the Whitney Theater. You do know that our producer, Jim Diedrichson, has decided to leave. Yeah, I know. I got a letter from him this morning. Well, then you also realize we have to make arrangements to come up with another producer. Yeah, he, he made a recommendation. He mentioned uh, uh, Gavin, Gavin, Gavin Wiley. Wiley's the director. I know, but Diedrichson seems to feel he knows enough about the theater to produce as well. Well, I have no complaints about the recommendation. I just don't know if Wiley wants the job. Well, then find out, Spencer. That's what you're paid for. Right. That's why. Now that Diedrichson has left town, I wonder if Valerie is feeling lonely. I'm not sure why you're asking the question, though. Particularly after the number of times I've seen you with Raven. Yeah. Well, I'm going to cut down on that number. You are? Yeah. Well, maybe that explains it. Explains what? Well, I just heard that Raven was having dinner with your friend Ian tonight. I had been invited to join the party. You going to go? No. Why not? Why, yes. Because I want for you to go. Sorry. I want you to go to that dinner party, and I want you to pay particular attention to everything that transpires between Raven and Ian. Sky, I'm your business manager, not your personal snoop. This is business, Spencer. Take my word for it. That's an order. All right. I'll go, if the invitation still stands. Now, let's make it soon, because Mike is complaining that we don't see you often enough. You don't have to twist my arm. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. Hello? Valerie! Hi, this is Skye. Skye? Um, how are you? Oh, I'm, I'm fine. You know, I've been thinking it's been so long since we've seen each other that perhaps we could get together for dinner, uh, perhaps even tonight, if you're free. Well, um, actually, I don't have any plans. Good. Well, don't make any. Um, I'll send Gunther over in an hour to pick you up. When Clairol created a hair setter to take care of your hair, we didn't stop with our easy wind-up rims. We didn't stop with our exclusive heat-holding core. We didn't stop until we created a velvety roller that prevents tangling to leave hair in beautifully smooth condition. We didn't stop until we created care setting. Clairol Custom Care Setter. Now there's a care setter with smaller rollers. Clairol Custom Care Setter for tighter curls. I want an aspirin-free pain reliever. What do I do now? Ask your doctor about Daytril. Extra strength Daytril tablets. Daytril is 100% aspirin-free. Daytril? It contains the same aspirin-free pain reliever hospitals use most. Well, fine, but is it really strong? You can't buy a stronger aspirin-free pain reliever. Look for extra strength Daytril in this factory-sealed package. 
Ask your doctor about Daytril from Bristol-Myers. Am I glad I found out about Daytril? On General Hospital, Scotty becomes Luke's last chance to save Holly. You just want to turn the screws, don't you? The question you have to ask yourself is, do you hate me more than you love her? General Hospital. Doc, didn't they teach you about it in medical school? They didn't have to teach us. Knew all about it ourselves. Hey, that's not what you told me. You told me you never drank much because you had such a low tolerance. Well, I outgrew it. And now you haven't. Come on, come on, come on. I'm not going to get falling down drunk. That's what you Just say. I'm going to try to relax a little bit. I have to be very relaxed tomorrow when I get up in front of that medical review board. Especially when I see Mr. Everett Cooper, I better be just so relaxed that I don't punch him in the nose. Well, I sure hope you're kidding. I am. Don't worry about it. I'm going to be a perfect gentleman, really. You know what I think I'm going to do? I think I'm going to go upstairs and read. You're going to go read? Yes. Medical journals, very heavy stuff, you know. I promised myself I better do some very heavy medical journal reading tonight. Well, I think that's a very good idea. Don't you? Sure, yeah. Well, good, good. We all agree. It's a good idea. That's what I will do. Excuse me. Excuse me. That woman. Well, Whitney is frightened. Of course, he should be. That's why we're assured of his cooperation. He can just see himself on the front pages of every newspaper in the country. Well, you can imagine what it means to him. Skylar Whitney, named as a spy, has gone to a great deal of trouble just to get his name back. Now to find it linked with espionage and treason. been since your mom's fixed jello pudding for you. How long? A long, long time. But she knows it's good for you, right? Uh -huh. And uh -huh. she knows that you love it, right? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Well, maybe she forgot. Maybe I should remind her. Mom, you know how the kids love jello pudding, and you know it's made with fresh milk, so it's wholesome. And you haven't made jello pudding for them since last night. Last what? <laughs> kids love jello brand pudding. Remember. Oh, you're the only one we leave Max with. Max. He loves you. And he loves gravy train. Now he loves something better. Oh, come on. It's true, Gran. It's improved gravy train. It has a richer, thicker, real meat gravy. A lot like homemade. You can add water to the leading dog food or gravy up a better taste with gravy train dog food. Gravy, gravy it up. My old friend has a new love. Gravy it up with improved gains gravy train. Tonight on 2020, Dustin Hoffman, how is he really? Not only am I a flirt, but I have a lot of chauvinism, I have a lot of womanizing. Plus, new solutions to a painful problem, backaches, and the dangers of automatic weapons in the hands of civilians on 2020 Tonight. 
save today at Martin Paint's famous second gallon free paint sale. Buy the first gallon, get the second gallon of the same paint free. It ain't just paint. Good afternoon, I'm John Johnson. Coming up on the 5 o'clock Eyewitness News, the freezing cold. A blast of Arctic air whipped by strong winds has us all shivering, but some are worse off than others. We'll tell you about that and about how cold it's going to get tonight, and we'll have this report, too. Know what to buy the kids for Christmas? I'm consumer counselor Phyllis Eliasberg, and I'll show you some good choices. Also a woman who'll show you how to write love letters, the latest E.T. gimmick, and a pony turns up on Staten Island. That's at 5. Join us. As you can see, the same long-distance call to the same place at the same time doesn't cost the same. Fact is, it can be half as much on MCI, the nation's long-distance phone company. If your long-distance bills are $25 a month or more, call MCI now and join more than a million people in cutting those bills down to size. Call now. You can use the extra money more than Bell Telephone. My husband's picking me up, Madge. But don't let him see those hands. He may drop you. It's dishwashing. What'll I try? Well, everything. And use palm olive liquid. Soften hands while you do dishes. I'm softening your hands in it right now. Mmm. Feels soft, like a lotion. Well, sure. Palm olive's really mild. Must be. But how does it clean? Great. Right, Madge. The same palm olive formula that's so gentle on your hands also cleans the toughest grease, leaves everything spotless. And palm olive softens hands while you do dishes. Hi, George. Ooh, soft. Madge palm olive's worth a mint. Well, here's a mint. Where's my palm olive? Remember, palm olive softens hands while you do dishes. How has Dynasty's rise caused a TV star war? And will the Dallas Empire strike back? Inquiring minds want to know. I want to know. What does this new book reveal about TV's hottest star? It's an exclusive in the Inquirer. How can you look thinner by dressing slimmer? Can the color red make you strong? It's in the Inquirer. Who's the mystery girl in these exclusive photos of Ted Kennedy? Find out in the Inquirer. Over 100 features for people with inquiring minds. Like me. It'll never work. We're testing whether Tegrin Shampoo can keep baseball star Jim Palmer's dandruff under control for three days. Tegrin Shake, day one. Looking good, so far. Tegrin Shake, day two. Tegrin's still working, but the game's not over. Yeah. yeah. Tegrin Shake, day three. Incredible. Tegrin did it. All right, yeah, it works. From yeah. now on, I'm trusting Tegrin. Try Tegrin. It works on dandruff. Really works. Between shampoos. 